This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. Hi everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Pocket Science, which is a new series in which I do science experiments with things that fit in your pocket. And today we're doing a potato battery. I know it might sound like the most overdone science experiment, but it was inspired by an excellent question that I heard at the end of one of Charlie McDonald's talks, who was like, pretty cool. So this kid put their hand up at the end and they asked him whether potato batteries were a real thing and if so, which potato was the best battery? No one had the answer, but I know I wasn't alone in wondering which potato indeed would be the best one. So this episode is to find that out. Right, so to make your potato battery, first of all, you're quite obviously going to need a few potatoes. I very quickly discovered that trying every single type of potato sold in British supermarkets would A, be time consuming, slight waste of food and probably quite boring. So I've stuck to two types, Jersey Royals and Tesco finest red potatoes. There is no particular decision for this choice other than they were my favourite. That being said, I found a paper that claimed that boiled potatoes do better at being batteries than raw potatoes, so I will be testing that as well. Next up, you're going to need material to turn the batteries into potatoes by creating an anode and a cathode, for which we have galvanised wire and copper, although you can use different materials as well, but this is what I found at my local hardware store. Next up, you're going to want something to actually power your potatoes with, be that an LED light, a buzzer, maybe a clock, but I actually want to quantify how well the potatoes do. So instead I've got a voltmeter, or in this case, a multimeter, to test the voltage of the potatoes. Right, so we've got all our ingredients to make the potatoes. So what we're going to do now is build the battery and measure the voltage and the amperage. Then we're going to boil the potatoes and measure their voltage and the amperage again and see if there are any significant differences. So let's start simple with a Jersey Royal potato. First of all, we're going to need to put in something made of copper. This is a pipe clip, but it's going to work just as fine. So we pop that in. And then same with galvanised wire. Shove that in as well. And unbelievably, <laughs> the battery is ready. And we're going to test it with a voltmeter, and then we're going to boil it and compare the results. Okay, so we now have our voltmeter. We're going to set it up. It's pretty straightforward. Head goes in here. Black goes in here, and when I touch two things with these pins, it's going to measure the difference in potential, which is the voltage. So, for instance, I'm supercharged. Um, it's probably more sensible to actually test it with something such as a battery, which has a known voltage, and I can check that it's working just fine. So now we're going to do this with our very special potato battery. So the red goes on the copper, the black goes on the galvanised wire, yeah, 0 0.16. And then we want to measure the voltage. It's going up. I took the voltage and amperage for two Jersey potatoes and began to suspect that the length of the galvanised wire that was stuck in the potato might actually affect several of those variables. Oh dear. I decided to measure a single red potato, but I chose two distant points along the potato to see if the distance between the wires would have an effect without using two potatoes. I did notice that the further apart they were, the higher the resistance in the potato. So let's see what happens when we boil these babies. Whilst my potatoes are boiling, I am expecting that to be breaking down some of the compounds inside the potato, meaning that the resistance between the anode and the cathode should go down. So hopefully that means the amperage should go up because there'll be less resistance, we can draw more power from the potatoes. We will see by how much though. Here are our beautiful, freshly boiled potatoes. Hopefully the temperature won't affect too much. They definitely feel very squishy. So let's start with the small potatoes, which will have cooled down a bit more. And for the moment of truth, let's see if the amperage changes. Ooh, it does. That's amazing. That's loads more than it was before. At this point, I decided to verify that indeed the amount of wire in the potato had a significant effect on amperage. Wow! The voltage, on the other hand, remained mostly unchanged after boiling, but here's a full summary. Cool, so what have we learnt from this first episode of Pocket Science? Well, I don't know what you've learnt, but I've certainly learnt quite a lot about potato batteries. For starters, it does seem that, yes, boiling potatoes has a very striking effect on the amperage, the amount of current you can draw from the potato, 
which makes sense because as you're boiling the potato, it's actually breaking down the compounds inside. So you would expect it to be easier for the electrolyte to transfer across. The other thing is that the surface area of the anode and the cathode within the potato also affect voltage and amperage, which is to be expected. And I feel I probably should have controlled for that. I feel it's easier with this pipe clip because of its shape. Not so much for the wire. It's, um, I did not make any markings on it and it just kind of goes straight through the cooked potato. However, to answer the key question, which potato is the best potato? Well, out of this grand selection of two, I have got to say, Jersey Royal potatoes have won by quite a way. For starters, they are actually battery sized and they outperform the red potatoes on both voltage and amperage. So much for Tesco finest. Although who knows, maybe the red potatoes could have benefited from some more cooking time. That being said, feel free to test any other potato types to see if they fare better than these. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Draw Curiosity. I learnt a lot from this. Um, and before you wander off, we've got three bits of news. Number one, special message from the potatoes. Hey Josie, what you up to? You seem zoned out. No I'm not, I'm square spaced out. What does that mean? It means I'm building my own website so that other tubers can hire me. And it's so simple that even a potato like me can use it. That sounds really good actually. What should I do if I want a website like that too? Well, I got mine for 10% off by going to squarespace.com forward slash draw curiosity and using the code DC at checkout. Great, keep your eyes peeled for me because I'm coming. Number two, it's not just me who's been playing with potatoes today. There have been a lot of edutubers who've been working on their own potato batteries and looking at other things about potatoes that you probably didn't even know you wanted to know. So go check that out in the playlist linked above. And finally, this is really random, but right now, when you're watching this, I'm going to be in South Africa filming a science game show for Discovery. I'm appearing on one episode, still don't quite know what it's going to be all about, and I'm probably not allowed to speak about it once it's happened, but I'm really excited for the trip and I'm going to start packing as soon as I finish this. So I just wanted to let you know. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one.